Good morning. It is Saturday, February the 12th, 2022. And again, we're sharing some great hymns of the faith together. This, these come from the book Crusader Hymns and Hymn Stories by the Billy Graham team. Today's is To God Be the Glory, and I'm sure a familiar hymn to many of you. This hymn story was written by Cliff Barrows. If a hymn die, can it live again? The life story of To God Be the Glory proves that the answer is yes. Originally composed in America sometime before 1875, it was almost immediately forgotten in its native land. In 1954, however, To God Be the Glory was rediscovered and acclaimed as a new favorite. In Great Britain, the same hymn never faded into oblivion as it did in the United States. I had heard it sung there in 1952 during our early visits. Later, it was suggested for inclusion in the songbook we were compiling for the London Crusade of 1954. Because of its strong text of praise and its attractive melody, I agreed. We introduced the hymn during the early days of those meetings in Herringway Arena. As a result, Billy Graham asked that we repeat it often because he was impressed with the enthusiastic participation of the audience. In the closing weeks of the crusade, it became our theme hymn. Repeated almost every night, the words well expressed our praise to God who is doing wondrous things in Britain. Returning to America, we brought the hymn with us and used it first in the Nashville, Tennessee Crusade of August 1954. It was quickly adopted by many church groups and has recently been included in several new hymnals. Why to God be the glory was so late in achieving recognition in its homeland may always remain a mystery. It is not mentioned in the writings of either Fanny Crosby, author of the words, or W.H. Doan, composer of the music. Evidently, the song leader Ira D. Sankey took it to Great Britain when he went there as an evangelist for D.L. Moody in 1873. Sankey included it in his Sacred Songs and Solos, a hymn book first published in England in 1874 and still used today. For some unknown reason, the song did not appear in the important gospel hymn series of books which Sankey published in America after his return from Britain in 1875. Through the years, To God Be the Glory has been included in several American hymnals, but until 1954, it failed to find its rightful place in the singing of our congregations. Of all the songs that have been popularized through crusade activity, we are most happy about this one. Its testimony should remain in the heart of every Christian. Every area of a person's life should reflect this witness, to God be the glory. All men, Christian or non-Christian, try to find meaning in life. Modern existentialists, atheists, and agnostics, and even a few who call themselves Christians, are trying to find this meaning within man himself. But the true answer to this quest is defined in the Westminster Catechism. The chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. In other words, the reason for man's creation and the whole purpose of his living is to express praise to God with his lips and with his life. We give God the glory because of his love, a love which provided redemption for mankind. The Apostle Paul exclaimed, God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, Galatians 6.14. We bring nothing to our own salvation. It is all of God. Therefore, we can take no credit for it. To God be the glory. In another passage, Paul reminds us, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's, 1 Corinthians 6.20. This is the biblical answer to the seeking existentialist. Each day's experiences have ultimately meaning only if we acknowledge that we are God's and that each act and each thought should glorify him. To God be the glory. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yield his life and atonement for sin and open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. O come to the Father through Jesus' Son and give him the glory. Great things he hath done. So wrote Fanny Crosby. 
Father God, we thank you for your love, and we give you the glory and the praise and the honor. Be with us this day, be with us this week, for it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us, and again, each day for a while, we're going to be featuring some well-known hymns.